All right, the best fat burning supplement by far is creatine. Oh, oh yeah. I like, I like that. Yes. I like that. Burning. I know yes. where you're going with that. It's true. So there's a huge market for fat burning supplements, and they're largely made up of stimulant based uh, products. And what stimulants do is they obviously make you feel hyped in the short well, term. What about my pyruvate, bro? Oh, God. Nobody talks about that yeah, anymore. Remember that back in the day? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but yeah, they, 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 they're stimulants, so they get you kind of hyped up in the short term. In the long term, they don't because you start to, your body starts to regulate, adjust, and adapt. But in the short term, you get this boost of energy, so it may make you move more. There's also appetite suppressing effects. So that's why sometimes fat burners in the short term can help people lose weight. But I'll argue in the long term, not so great because of the, the, the effect they have, the stress response they have in the body. They don't really contribute to muscle building um, for long-term health. Not really too many benefits. Creatine, on the other hand, never marketed as a fat burner. But we all know it's a clearly the most effective non-hormonal legal muscle building supplement you can take. So indirectly, you are going to burn more body fat in the long term with creatine because more muscle equals faster metabolism. And a faster metabolism is a wonderful thing to have when you're talking about I, fat I loss. I love, I love that. Good old recomp. No, I mean, not to mention it's probably significantly cheaper than a lot of those fat burning supplements. Yes, and mm -hmm. healthy. Yeah. And good for you. It's got great health properties for the works. brain. It's good for the brain. It's got great properties for the heart. They're now starting to use it uh, with the aging population to prevent atrophy. Yeah. It's cognitive benefits, arthritis benefits, vegans. Yeah. It's it's a it's a great supplement. It's been around for a while. It's the most studied, one of the most studied supplements, <clears throat> and it's a indirectly it will help with fat burning. Just now, like resistance training is a great fat burning tool when it comes to exercise, even though it burns less calories than other forms of exercise, and it's all through that muscle building process. Now I want to tell you. What, so when I used to tell my clients to stay away from fat burners and that they're a waste of money. The thing that I would tell them is that they, they're a stimulant. And if you've ever felt yourself eat, you know, drink, you know, extra caffeine than, uh, uh, on a day or whatever with that, yeah. how, you know, antsy you are and how active you are. You yeah. just, you tend to get up more, or you're tapping your hands, you're doing stuff. And most of the studies and research around any of these fat burners that show any sort of positive benefits towards fat burning are directly connected to the just the, how much you move how more because you, you are. yeah right yeah. is that not true or what that's, are, that's part I mean, of it. that and then the appetite suppressant appetite suppressant yeah I mean other than that like it, there's the, the other benefits that they try and tout are just not worth yeah it. they'll show studies like more like more fat uh, mobilization and whatever but when you look at the actual studies on fat loss. You do, in a short term, sometimes see an effect. In the long term, I don't think there's a great effect. In fact, in my experience with clients who did use fat burners, there was always a strong rebound, right? Because when you're on them for you know 10 to 12 weeks, you get this appetite-suppressing effect. You get this kind of hyper energy. Um, it starts to wear off. You're going to go off at some point because you can't just keep ramping up your stimulants uh, you know, forever. When you go off, now everything's down-regulated. You feel like crap. Appetite comes back you know, like crazy, and you and it tends to wash out. And I, I, I mean, I'm even talking about the the ones that were very that aren't even legal necessarily today, like ephedra, the ephedra caffeine aspirin stack of the '90s and early 2000s. I mean, that'll kick the crap out of most you know over the counter stimulants now. It had those effects, but in the long term, it wasn't very good. And oftentimes, what people would notice is maybe some muscle loss because of the stress response that it induces in the body mm -hmm. versus creatine, which y y you're healthier, you feel good, muscles are stronger, fuller, they recover right. faster, you build them faster, and then over time you get this metabolism boost. I feel like uh, one to two reps, I've always feel like stronger when I'm running creatine. Like it just feels like I have like a little bit more in the tank, you know, in the workout. So it's like, you know, it has to benefit uh, your overall progress if you're yeah. really kind of Here's why creatine never gets marketed as a fat burner. <clears throat> Because you gain a little weight when you go on it. Yeah, because it holds water in your muscle. Yes. So you, yeah. So that's a terrible. It's a vital part of performance. And we know that's going to fuck with most people's heads, right? People totally. That get and say, "Oh my God, I heard from Mind Pump that this is a great way to to lose body fat," and then they start taking it. and They're like, "Oh shit, my scale Heavier. went up two pounds," and they freak yeah. out. Yes. They don't realize that. Yeah. Okay. So your body's holding a little bit of water in your muscle. It doesn't mean that you got fatter. Yeah. Right? And and by the way, water in the muscle is not the same as bloat. So you can yeah. have water outside the muscle which is bloat and it makes your body look smoother. Water in the muscle is a more full looking muscle. It's a tighter muscle, not unlike a pump. Like when you get a pump, 
your muscles now have more fluid in them. You don't look like you're, you're fatter. Your muscles actually might look even more defined. So it's not a bloat on the outside of the body. It's intracellular, intramuscular They're more water. engorged. And it's a little yeah. bit. It's not much. I just wanted to say engorged. That's nice. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I might gain with creatine. I'll tend, my, my weight will go up like three, four pounds. Three to five pounds. And I have a lot That's of lean body mass. Yeah, yeah. With someone with less lean body mass, it's a pound or two. Yeah. But the fat burning effects over time- I don't think anything can really compare, you know, over the counter that you can find, especially when you look at the health effects. So, uh, you know, I'm going to I'm going to add to that and take it one step further. I I would agree with you that I I think creatine creatine is a superior fat burning supplement for those reasons. And then I would even say the next, you know, series or types of supplements that would be even better than fat burners would be actually just assessing and seeing what nutrients you're lacking. Oh, yeah. So, you know, are you are you getting enough magnesium in your diet? Like, are you getting enough vitamin D? Are you getting enough vitamin yeah. D? Are you, are you missing in some of these vital nutrients uh, or are you low than uh -huh. lower than average? And supplementing to get that up, I think, makes your body run more optimally. Everything from sleep to energy to yeah. strength to just over, over and over time, yeah. th those compounding effects will pay back more dividends towards fat loss than taking some bullshit T2 supplement or liposomal yeah. some shit. Like that stuff yeah. is like- Anything yeah. that's going to bring you back to a more healthy place, right? Like your, your healthy homeostasis where, uh, you know, after you're deficient, I mean, that's a great point. If you're, um, you know, eating certain foods that are inflammatory and your body is just fighting this, you know, uh, internally as you're trying to progress and lose body fat, you know, you're going to have a hard time. So to, to be able to kind of figure all that out, much more effective than taking some uh, fat burning pills. Oh, yeah. oh, I wish I understood that as a kid. Like, yes. the, like you know, the first, I remember as a, I spent so much money on, and when I didn't have very much money either, you know, I was making $5 an hour or whatever and a few hundred bucks a month and I'm spending 200 something on like muscle building supplements. Riding mean, your bike because you have Meanwhile, <laughs> I'm not even tracking my protein and, you know, years later find out that I'm grossly under consuming protein simply just, you know, and that's, there's another supplement, right? There's that I would rather see someone take and that it includes for fat loss. Also, if you grossly under eat protein and you're a female or trying to lose weight, you getting your protein intake. I'm having this conversation literally with my sister right now who wants to lose a bunch of weight. And she's like, want, she has all these questions. Should I take this and tell me the exact, I'm like, listen, all I want you to do is prove to me for two weeks that you can hit the protein intake I'm telling you to and watch how hard that is. And she's calling me every day going like, God, brother, it's really hard to do that yeah. consistently. I'm like, this is going to pay you back towards your fat loss goal more than anything else I can teach you. Just start with that. And then, and so and that's the very beginning is just getting her to eat, eat her protein. You're intake. right. It's similar to creatine, right? Because higher protein diet, so long as calories are controlled, right? It's an appetite suppressant, builds more muscle indirectly. You end up burning uh, more body fat. You know, with the nutrient deficiency thing, I'm glad you said that. That's a big one because if you have a legit nutrient deficiency, uh, your, <clears throat> forget fat loss, your health is not good. Like if you're lacking vitamin D, or magnesium, or zinc, or any other essential nutrient, your rate of anxiety, depression, insomnia, your hormones are like low vitamin D in men, low testosterone, right? So nutrient deficiencies are, that's a medical issue. And there's almost nothing more impactful. And I've had a few clients like this where we were going down the list trying to figure out what the hell was going on. They got their nutrients tested. My B vitamins are low or whatever supplementing with them, finding the right dose, and then it's like night and day, like complete night and day in terms of how they feel. Yeah, That's a really big one. Now, I know the next question is going to be like, what's the best form of creatine? Uh, creatine monohydrate. The cheap They're, one. That's it. <laughs> that's the one that's Yo, studied. No other form of creatine has been yeah. shown to be better. So you have to explain, Kate, because- Everything else is marketing, right? By, yes. Yeah, by this, and there's lots of it around creatine. And, yes. and it's and it's and it's continued to evolve and change, and I guarantee there's somebody on here right now that's probably shouting at their their phone or whatever. That whoa, what about this? Like <laughs> I've heard this. The delivery system on this is so I much. I work better. at GNC. Oh, yeah. Well, or that, or they sell yeah. a creatine that they and the the reason why that has exploded all the different types and delivery systems is because the margins have gotten so shitty in creatine. Yeah. Creatine is so widely known. It's actually pretty easy to get. It's relatively inexpensive. 
And so it's no longer what we could make off of it in the you know late 90s and early 2000s. Now everybody can get it in bulk for really cheap. So we know the next way to get good margins at it is make it a, you know a delivery system that's different or pair it with something else mm-hmm. and sell it on why that is such a, a important this factor. This combo is the ultimate. Yeah, ultimate. where it's splitting hairs. If you want to understand the supplement industry, read up on the history of creatine. It's a, it's a beautiful textbook example of how the supplement industry evolves and how they constantly shit the bed, right? So in the mid 90s, I don't remember the exact year, but in the it was sometime in the mid 90s, creatine became an available supplement and it was a complete breakthrough because up until then and even since then, no supplement has been shown to have the, the, those kinds of effects. There's all kinds of supplements prom- promising muscle building and stuff. Nothing actually works like creatine does. You take it and 90% of people that take it are going to notice an incredible effect. So in the mid '90s, I believe it was, and it was Bill Phillips' company, EAS, was one of the first ones to market it. This is no joke. So this is like '90, I want to say '95, '96, probably when I first started taking it. A 100 gram bottle of creatine monohydrate. So it was a small bottle, EAS, forty five dollars in the mid '90s. <laughs> it's how much it costs. Yeah. Or you could buy Phosphagain. This was a protein supplement with cro- with creatine. And Phosphagen, I H P. And then they started coming out with more, with, with different ones. <laughs> And they really, they really kind of own the market on creatine for a little yeah. while. And it's one of the main reasons why they completely exploded, besides yeah. the marketing brilliance of, of Bill Phillips, they exploded. And so what supplement companies did is they're like, okay, as creatine becomes more available, how the hell do we separate ourselves from our competitors? Because it's just all creatine. It's all yeah. the same. So they first started competing with delivery systems. So this company over here is like, Dextrose, got to have Dextrose. And then this mm-hmm. one over here mm-hmm. you know, is, is talking about, oh, this other thing that you got to take with it, and it's carnitine, and it's whatever. So they started competing with that first. Then they came out with different versions of creatine. Creatine citrate, throw it in water, it fizzes up. This is better absorption. It's not, right? All these different forms coming out. This one prevents the bloat that comes from creatine because what they did is they worked off of the false myth around creatine causing bloat in, in a lot of people. And the truth is, they've studied all of them. None of them are more efficacious than creatine monohydrate. In fact, creatine monohydrate usually is the most efficacious one. At the very best, they're about the same if they have a different version. So there's nothing that's better. It's the most studied. It's also the least expensive. Yeah. So really, and what in powder, just get creatine monohydrate powder, pure, plain powder. Yeah. It doesn't need to be micronized, although that's fine if it's easier for you to swallow than the gritty you know, powder. It doesn't need to be put in a tablet, but if you prefer it that way, you could take it that way. It's inexpensive. What you want is just something that's got third-party testing to make sure that it's pure because supplement companies can sometimes be Pixie dirty. Dust it, right? mm-hmm. Yeah, or just be dirty. Like you'll you'll have heavy metals or, or something like that in there. But that's pretty much it. And, and so they try to find ways to compete with each other by coming up with a new marketing angle and maybe it's a different, you know, we we bound it with an amino acid. We did this, we did that to increase it. None of it, none of it works. And by the way, I love that you use that as like, this is a great like history lesson for people around supplements yes. because protein has followed that same pattern. <laughs> yes. yeah. Pre-workouts had followed that same Very pattern. It's like we take a couple things that we learn that are, oh, this there's some value to this. Yep. Like people should- How do you put a twist on it now? Yeah, now, now and, and then every and the first few people that figure it out and sell it make millions and millions, sometimes probably billions of dollars. And then, then the market gets flooded with everybody trying to jump on it, like. And then now it's like, okay, how do we separate and differentiate yeah. ourselves from the other, the guy next door who's selling the exact same product for about the same price, or maybe even a little bit cheaper? I've got to throw some other things in it. I've got to sell the idea that that's so important. It's like, it's it's so one unfortunate. Of, one of my favorites. I never, I'll never forget this. I had a female trainer that worked for me, and I we were talking one day about supplements, and I was telling her about creatine, and she's like, "Okay, you know, I think I'll get some." And she comes in, and she's like, "I got creatine, but I got the one for women." I'm like what? <laughs> <laughs> and she, I swear to God, it what? was this. I don't remember the name. I wish I knew the name because I'd love to make fun of this company. It was a pink bottle. Yeah, it's because it's pink, right? And it yeah, said creatine without the bloat. Shreds did that bullshit, yeah. dude. Wow. Creatine they without the, the bloat. They did, they did that for protein powder. Oh, protein just, powder just, for men. Protein powder for oh, women. Here's my. a whole load of bullshit. Yeah. yeah. I, okay, you know You're what? <laughs> Yeah. You know what? Ninety nine percent of them do too, right? Because it, it's the same thing the multivitamin does. Yeah, and the, and the multivitamin throw a little iron, iron, extra yeah. iron. <laughs> that's it. They yeah. put a little more iron in it, and then they throw Women it in a pink label a and month, say it's throw it, some iron. Yeah, in there. yeah. yeah that's exact. That's a, that's all the have, difference yeah. of a, a woman's multivitamin, a men's multivitamin yeah. is a woman's multivitamin has a higher dose of iron inside of it. That is it. 
And then you do the same thing with a protein powder. It's like, oh, there's a protein powder for women. Why? Because we we bumped an extra 500 milligrams mm -hmm. of freaking iron inside there. Yeah. So now we say it's for Dude. women. Yeah, you know? you know what they'll do in the men's one? Like men's multivitamin <laughs> with, you know, lycopene for your prostate or some shit. You know? Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. <laughs> so, but no, it, it's, like, thanks. it's completely true. Plain powder, it, the bloat thing, that's a myth. Uh, if it causes digestive distress, that's different. Very small percentage of people might notice digestive issues with creatine, but it's very small. It's like less than 10%. Mm -hmm. You will gain a couple pounds. It's not body fat. It's literally intracellular, intramuscular water. That's a good thing. That's what you want. Uh, you will get stronger. You you nailed it on the head, Justin. The average person, uh, it's not it's not steroids. You're not going to all of a sudden you know have these crazy gains. But you'll gain about five pounds or two reps on most of your lifts. I, that's a, I think that's a great that's way to do it. Yeah. That, well, isn't what's happening, it, it, it's speeding up the, 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 the way your body re replenishes ATP and ADP, And right? it causes, and it, your body so, has more ATP. So I used to, I know this is not scientifically correct, but this is the way I would explain it to clients to get my point across, is I'd say, imagine you have 100 of these energy molecules, ADP and ATP, 100 of them before you do your set. When you do your set, your body uses 20 of those. Mm -hmm. When you rest between sets, your body replenishes, let's say, 15 to 18 of those. That's why as the workout goes on, you get a little weaker, a little weaker, because it's, you know, you're, you're constantly depleting, and then it's not quite replenishing all of it back. Yeah, he's a closer. When you're oh, on man. creatine, okay, oh, and by the way, it's on sale this month for... You know, <laughs> <laughs> so my book creatine. I like how you said there was no science. Yeah. <laughs> Man, I wish we had that right yeah, now. But by the by, you know, so then it replenishes. Okay, when you're on creatine, and I said that, you know, or without creatine, your body naturally replenishes on the rest period. I said 18 of those molecules. It now does 19, right? Yeah. Or 19 and a half or whatever. So it's, you know, as it depletes, it's just replenishing a little bit. That little bit more of energy per set. The way it translates into one more rep yeah. or two more reps. Now the so. now the reality is it's more like you normally have a hundred of these ATP molecules, and because you supplement with creatine, you have 150. So okay. your your stores are higher, and because of the intracellular intramuscular fluid or water, they believe that to be one of the reasons why you see faster recover and faster muscle growth. Mm. So you are stronger because you have more muscle energy, and you do gain a little bit of water inside your muscles. But through that process, your muscles actually build faster over time. And creatine also is now being discovered. Well, not now being discovered. There's lots of studies that show this. But now you're going to start to see it get marketed as a health and wellness supplement, improving cognition, reducing mm -hmm. arthritis, you know, arthritic pain, uh, heart uh, health. Like this is a, a supplement that was ad advertised to hardcore bodybuilders, you know, 20 or 30 years ago, whatever. So yeah. Yeah. really exciting Pretty stuff. Trippy. Well, I yeah. know you've been, you were, did you talk about, uh, I know you've been doing this way. I brought it up on the last episode. You've been talking to some of our partners. I know um, Organifi has been one of the partners you're talking to. Did you guys even talk about potentially doing creatine or anything like that? I know they don't offer that Not yet. really. I can't really talk about what we discussed uh, in regards to, you know, you know, potentially creating new supplements uh, moving forward. You can't even hint for us, not even a little bit. No, not really. Like, yeah, it's a secret. <laughs> it is a it's secret. A secret. We're, we're trying to look at all the all the gray market stuff we could still throw in there. Before <laughs> <laughs> you know, he's still. I mean, at was, life. I'm was, just kidding. Was answer. creatine even on the table? Leg, was it something protein. you guys discussed at all, or no? No, not really. Um, we didn't talk about it. I like creatine a lot, but I also think it's ubiquitous. It's inexpensive, and I mean, yeah, you could do it, and yeah. you know, whatever. But we're not gonna get rich doing it. No, I mean, I, I think exactly. I, and that's why they come up with so many different crazy, you know, types of creatine and stuff like that, right? Yeah. Hey, if you enjoyed that clip, you can find the full episode here or you can find other clips over here. And be sure to subscribe.